Jackman Santana, but first the heavyweight battle between McGroom and Johnson. With us as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, as we get ready to watch Kirk Johnson from Nova Scotia, 20 and 0 against a lot of his usual suspects. Is he for real? He looks the part, Jim, which is a start. More important, Georgie Benton, who toured Evander Holyfield, much or most of what he knows, has taken him on, and Benton says he has the potential. to Burbick to Lewis. But my favorite Canadian heavyweight, Jim. I'm, I'm dying to hear this. <laughs> Victor McLaughlin, who won an Academy Award in the 30s, a very famous actor in those days. Fight fans know that he was the first heavyweight to fight Jack Johnson after Johnson became the first black heavyweight champion. And Jim, that's everything I know about Canadian heavyweights. A factoid <laughs> suitably esoteric for boxing after dark. Incidentally, Terry McGroom almost made the 1992 Barcelona Olympic team, but didn't quite make it at the last second. He was 26 years old already at that time. There's a look at young Kirk Johnson, and there's the record, 20 wins, no losses, 14 knockouts. As you can see, eight of those knockouts in the first round. He wants to get to the undersized Terry McGroom, a cruiserweight moving up into the heavyweight division tonight. So we'll look for a fast start from young Johnson, trained as Larry pointed out, by the highly esteemed George Benton. And here is Terry McGroom out of Chicago. 13 wins, no losses, two draws. That the second of the two draws was 206 days ago, and that's the last time Terry McGroom was in the ring. So he's had a long layoff coming into this one as he prepares to try to seek economic opportunity in the heavyweight division superior to that which he has found as a cruiserweight. The last I saw Chris Johnson, he seemed like a very strong guy. And if McGroom does not know what he's doing with this weight, then he's going to be in for a long night. And the tail of the tape will show you what McGroom is up against as he faces Kirk Johnson. You can see Johnson with a height advantage, six years younger, 22 pounds in weight, four inches in reach, uphill task for McGroom. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Kirk Johnson-Terry McGroom fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. The standing gate count is in effect. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and he cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Ring announcer, new face on HBO's Boxing After Dark, Mark Biro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Park Place Ballroom at Bally's Hotel Casino and Tower on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for an evening of World Championship Boxing on HBO's Boxing After Dark under the promotion of Top Rank Incorporated in association with Budweiser, proud to be your bud. Your matchmaker is Ron Katz. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, the commissioner, the Honorable Larry Hazard. All bouts scored under a 10-point must system, three knockdown rule not in effect. Your ring officials assigned by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. Your ringside physicians are Dr. Kenneth Remsen, Dr. Earl Shaw, Dr. Howard Taylor, and Dr. Charles Wendelson. Your timekeepers are Art Spell and Lindsey Tucker. Counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Scott Rubenstein. This is your first contest of the evening. It is scheduled for 10 rounds, heavyweights. Your judges at ringside are, from West Orange, New Jersey, Al DeVito, from Ardsley, New York, Melvina Lathan, and from Barnegat, New Jersey, Barbara Perez. Your referee for this event, also from Barnegat, New Jersey, Tony Perez. Introducing first, in the red corner to my left, wearing the black and red striped trunks, Weighing in at 202 pounds, he is undefeated in 15 professional fights. He has 13 wins, no defeats, two draws, eight wins by way of knockouts. He hails from Flint, Michigan. Here is Terry Top Dog McGroom. McGroom. 
his opponent in the blue corner wearing the white trunks, black trim. He weighs in at 224 pounds. He is undefeated in 20 professional bouts. He has 14 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Northwestern Nova Scotia, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Kirk Mayola Johnson. Johnson, 10 rounds, heavyweight. the way, all right? Give me a good clean fight and I'm more, more than any one of you. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands and most important, protect yourself at all times, all right? Check hands. Good luck to both of you. A new generation of heavyweights starting to show its stuff. Does Johnson belong among them? Johnson's announced strategy for this fight. He wants to get off to a fast start. Take McGroom out of the fight early. Don't give him any confidence as he tries to move up into the heavyweight division. As for McGroom, he wants to try to keep Johnson turning All right, break, break, so that the bigger man can't sit down on his punches. To do that, he needs to make liberal use of his jab and try to get inside and keep Johnson off balance. Tough assignment for McGroom. Very tough assignment for McGroom. One thing I can say about McGroom is that he does have a well-experienced trainer in Ace Miller in his corner. Johnson landing some early power shots, just as he had planned to do. Johnson looks very good for a heavyweight. He has good hand speed, he's showing good balance, and he's throwing good combinations here. Johnson's been able in the first minute to establish his jab and get to the body a couple times. McGroom has not been able to get inside as he hoped he would and has not been able to turn Johnson and keep him off balance. If I were managing a cruiserweight, it is no way I would have picked this heavyweight to bring him up again. Yeah, it would really be a monumental accomplishment for McGroom to be able to beat a guy like Johnson. He's a proven, established heavyweight at this early stage of his career. Roy, he's 30 years old. The most money he's ever made for a fight is around six or seven thousand dollars. He's getting thirty thousand tonight. That's why he's out there. And he's out there looking like to give it his all. Also, he comes from the notorious Cabrini Greens housing project in Chicago, so he's seen worse than Kirk Johnson in his day. <laughs> Well, after the early barrage from Johnson in the first minute of the fight, McGroom has slowed him down a little bit and landed a right hand over the top there. But the left hook staggers McGroom, and he goes down. Four, two, three, four, Welcome to the heavyweight five, division. Six, McGroom seven, was hurt. He eight. could have stood up, but he wisely went down on a knee to try to pull himself together. Well, very smart, because when you end up with a guy this big, this guy can seriously hurt you. Room with a much more graphic understanding now of what it means to take a heavyweight left hook. He sparred with some big guys, but admitted that they couldn't punch the way Kirk Johnson can. And he makes it out. Well, I tell you about pulling out them clinches, babe. Yeah. Need something to spit in. Get your breath real deep. Pit bucket, Bruce. Right here. Okay. Good counterpunch. Hey, listen, you get on your toes and moving some. You're sitting down like you're in the, in the, in the tenth round already, son. You're supposed to be moving on this guy, getting this guy tired. Okay. You move your right, get Let's your hands up. Let's take a look uh, and watch. This kid has some fast hands. Georgie Benton said he wanted to turn him into a heavyweight Ezra Charles, but uh, Ezra Charles rarely went after a man with that kind of conviction early in a fight. Nice left hook. Short. Sharp left hook that hurt Groom, McGroom. 
Ezra Charles never had a chance to fight a man that he outweighed by 25 pounds. Well, right. Ezra Charles was really a great, great light heavyweight who fought most of the top heavyweights of his day and was just a tremendous mechanic that everybody in boxing still refers to as as one of the hallmarks of the sport. He's the kind of fighter that McGroom would have to hope to be to succeed in this division. And Ace Miller made a good point in the corner by telling McGroom that the plan was to stay outside, move away on this guy, and make him tired first. Two good trainers okay. working against each other. Ace Miller with Terry McGroom, George Benton with Kirk Johnson. Benton, of course, taught Evander Holyfield. A lot of his chops during Holyfield's years with Lou Duva and Benton as co-trainers. Guard, trying to limit the damage that Johnson can do to his body. So far, he's been able to do that. There he lands a jab over the top, but he has to be careful about those short counters when he comes inside. Now, Kirk Johnson is throwing a very good jab. He's throwing a defensive jab, which doesn't allow his opponent to counter his jab. One of the things he told us, Roy, was that before he was with Georgie Benton, he only knew one kind of jab. And now he's trying to throw three and four different kinds. Looks good on the right-hand uppercut there. Look very good with that right uppercut. These are things that you don't see good heavyweights do nowadays. You can see there with a couple of feel-out left jabs followed by a good right hand. Georgie Benton is spending a lot of good quality time with this kid. So much okay, attention Rick. is paid to the very top of the heavyweight division that a lot of young heavyweights are still struggling for identity. Johnson's one of them, along with fighters like Andrew Galata and David Tua and Courage Shabalala and Obed Sullivan, and there are several others, all of whom could emerge as possible title threats in the next three or four years. Well, Kirk Johnson is about to become one of my best-looking prospects. He's one of my favorites all right, now. Rick. If you like what you see. I like what I see, especially, especially for a heavyweight. And my head is off to Terry McGroom because he is in here under a lot of pressure tonight, and he is not backing down, and he will not lay down. Hanging in pretty well through the first two rounds. Terry McGroom giving up more than 20 pounds in weight and a lot of strength to Kirk Johnson. Hit him to the bottom and hit him to the top, right? Because he's right there. Oh, just look, you just swing. You turn to hit him with the right hand. You got that? Now you're doing all right now. That round, you're handling him just right. You're winning. See, see, you have fun out there, right? Yeah. You don't go out there acting like you want to kill this guy because you'll miss all the fucking time. Wonderful uppercut. Two five punches landed one of them. It was a good one. What Terry McGroom has not been able to do, which he had dearly hoped to be able to do, is to get in and flurry and get out. In the first two rounds, he's only been able to get off 11 power punches and has done virtually no damage. He can't allow himself to throw power punches right now because if he can't trade with a guy that, this, that is this much heavier than he is. So he's just going to have to jab and hope that as the long course of the fight evolves, he can somehow pick Johnson apart. That's right. So obviously part of what you like about Johnson, Roy, is the punching technique. The punching technique, the execution of moves, and the fact that he stays busy with the jab any time he's bored. What about holding the left hand down so far? Not a problem because he has great balance and great footwork. 
And if he were in a bigger, stronger, uh, or against a bigger, stronger opponent, he might not hold it quite so low. He's kind of inviting McGroom to come in, right? Yeah, I think he wants McGroom to come in because it is to his advantage for them to trade punches. The thing I see Kirk Johnson doing right now is sometimes he's sticking a half a punch out there just to make McGroom keep his hands busy on defense. They trade right hands at point blank range. McGroom not backing off. And after having tasted the power of the left hook in the first round and gone down to steady himself, he's been able to hang in pretty well against Johnson's punching power. Right in a good right and a left there. And another right hand as McGroom gets considerably braver with a minute to go in round three. Yeah, but he can't allow himself to get in a slug fight right here. He's much too small to battle with the bigger Johnson. You can see McGroom almost willing himself to learn from this, regardless of what the outcome is going to be. Admirable trait in a 30-year-old fighter, but he was late coming to it. Boxing began as a disciplinary measure for him in high school. Johnson brought a left hook behind it. If I'm not mistaken, Johnson has a little bit of a welt under his right eye, and his right eye appears to be slightly bloodshot. And the left hook by Johnson was partially blocked by McGroom's glove. Still to come on HBO's Boxing After Dark, the flushing flash, Kevin Kelly of New York City against Edwin Santana, unbeaten from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Tonight's boxing card, so typical of modern boxing, three of these four fighters are undefeated, and the one who has lost a fight, Kelly, is by far the best known quantity of the four. But, but be throwing that right, don't hold it back. Throw it in here, in here. See? Keep him reaching at it. One behind the combinations. Two jabs, right hand, left up. Move in when you throw it. Don't throw it from the outside. All right, this guy ain't got nothing you ain't been in with before. You understand that? Huh? Let's get with it now and win this round. Need this round. Remember Ace Miller's topsy-turvy days with Big John Tate? 1984 Olympic heavyweight. Or check it, 1976 Olympic heavyweight, I should say. Ace Miller has coached myself through a great deal of national amateur boxing matches. Yep, knows the stuff, huh? Yes, he does. Round four, and there were moments in round one when it looked like McGroom would never make it this far. So you got to give the smaller fighter credit for steadying himself and finding a way to stay in the fight so far. Yeah, you have to give him a great deal of credit because he is in here with a very good-looking young prospect in the heavyweight division. This guy almost, Kurt Johnson, he almost reminds me of a young Greg Page. Except he's more on his flat-footed, not looking to jump in and jump out and be all over the place. But the hand speed and the pretty yeah. punches are there. Much more classically trained fighter. Straight right hand by Kurt Johnson. There was a lot of enthusiasm about the young Greg Page. I don't think he was quite as well muscle developed or as strong as Johnson appears to be. No, he wasn't quite as muscle developed. 
but he did have the good hand speed and the pretty good punching power. Yep, and good mechanics. And this kid has excellent mechanics. Johnson is in a groove here where he's trying to soften up the smaller man. The smaller man escaped early in the fight. He has shown he's tough and resourceful, and now Johnson just wants to beat him, beat him, soften him up, and perhaps stop him in a later round. And Johnson showed a great deal of patience. McGroom sneaking a jab in as Johnson tries to triple up with his own jab. Johnson going downstairs to jab to the body, and McGroom takes advantage to come upstairs. McGroom also landed a right hand earlier. There's another one. Terry McGroom is a willing fighter. Now his left eye appears to be closing gradually as the fight goes on. Four rounds, Harold Letterman, how do you see it? Larry, not a tough one. 40 to 35, four rounds to nothing, Kirk Johnson. You got to give him an extra point for the first round because it was a good, clean knockdown, so he wins that 10 to 8. The next three rounds, he wins closely, 10 to 9, makes it 40 to 35. Kirk Johnson is killing him with that up jab. He, you know, he puts the, the left hand down, and just snaps that jab up, he touches him, keeps him off balance, and then fires that straight right hand. The group's just not doing enough to win a round. So Kirk Johnson keeping him on the end of the jab, winning each and every round. I gave the crew in the third round, otherwise we're in sync. See what I mean? And that jab is working out. This is your kind of fight now. See, this guy's looking for that cat and mouse game. Let's open up a little bit. Come on. Got to have a round up. In addition to being great trainers, both Benton and Miller have great voices to listen to. What would you call? I would call Benton's voice a, a an alto sax. It's a baritone sax. It's a baritone sax. All right, better. I agree with that. Miller's is like number three sandpaper. <laughs> Fifth round. Saw the punch stat numbers that showed you that Johnson has thrown a lot of jabs, hasn't landed them at a high rate, but these are tactical jabs, aren't they, Roy? Very tactical jabs. They keep the other guy's hands busy defending punches. Oh, oh. good right hand by Johnson. Another one. And a punch pretty well taken at first by McGroom, but he is stunned. Trying to collect himself here, and Johnson should test him one more time with that right hand. Obviously, Johnson's convinced that McGroom has gotten his senses back. Isn't it time, Roy, for McGroom to come inside and try to be inside those big long arms? and fight him in there rather than outside because he's having absolutely no no luck no good fortune no ability to do anything from outside yep but it's kind of like when you're facing a guy like i know like roy jones when you come in you get hit so hard trying to get in there once you get there you get hit just as hard when you're in there you get back outside you don't get hit quite as much and quite as hard so sometimes that's the best place to be Uh, you're saying it's the lesser of two evils. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, but then he's also submitting to the opponent's strength. A and to ultimate defeat, because as you point out, Larry, he's got no tactical options from out here. Well, if he runs in there, he'll go and get defeated much quicker than if he just stays out there. At least he can see what's going on a little bit better out there. Choose your poison. Another good round for Kirk Johnson. I would much rather watch him take this left jab in the face than to get caught with the hook coming in. Good job blocking the left hook there by McGroom, who knows how to keep his gloves up. Good jab by McGroom. McGroom coming in behind the jab. Pretty good head movement. Johnson not getting flustered, taking his time. Landed a couple right hands in this round and will keep looking for opportunities to 
it. Right hand across the top. Bad thing about McGrew Larry is that if he gets inside, he's not going to stay there anyway. Well, that might be the safest what? place for him, though, Roy. And, it's gonna pay off. It's and speaking of safe places, this seems like as safe a place as any for us to introduce you to 27 year old Denise Piero. Born in Fort Lee, New Jersey, now lives in nearby Ventnor, works part of the time in a salon, but thinks of herself as a full time model. She's been covering the round card gig for about four or five years, and she's the only round card gal here tonight. And not a bit afraid of doing it alone. What'd you say, Larry? And nobody at ringside seems to be complaining. That's right. <laughs> As you said earlier, only one of her and what was the line, Larry? That's enough. Behind the jail. I think has, uh, Georgie Benton has sent Kirk Johnson out to get this fight over with now. Benton anxious to get back downstairs before right, the music right. stops and the casino closes. And McGroom stepping in a little bit closer, just as Larry Merchant suggested he should. Well, he has no other choice. He has shortened the distance between himself and Johnson, and he's going to find out right here how long he can last in the heavyweight division from this proximity. He landed a good right. Johnson is forcing the action. That's why they're so close here, I believe, Jim. Johnson has decided to come in behind his, his uh, defense and, and make it more of, okay, a, of a war inside, like this. Good hard left hand in close by Terry McGroom. He's a pretty sharp puncher when he gets a chance to get off in there. And he still has a lot of fight left in him. Out scheduled for 10 rounds. Action slows considerably now in the middle portion of the sixth. After a vigorous first minute here. Johnson going to a kind of underhand right hand lead. That was a good left uppercut by McGroom that bust Johnson's lip. And a cute little left hook inside by McGroom. If McGroom pushed the issue here a little more, he may be in better shape. Yeah, Johnson made a mistake a moment ago, sticking the right hand out and pawing with it, but McGroom didn't fire the left over the top, which he could easily have done. Right hand by McGroom as he pulls away. Now Johnson lands a left and a right. Liking the opportunities he finds as Johnson has decided to open up a little bit in round number six and took some punishment for his trouble. All he's going to do, Terry, is come out and blow him hard shots at you for 45 seconds. After that, he's your man. You just keep pulling back and you can't pull back. Don't you understand what I'm telling you, buddy? Don't you hear me? You've got to get rough with this guy. You won't win this fight. When that, after he's thrown that barrage at you and you picked him off, move inside on this guy. Walk yourself in, move with your head this way, Terry. Get inside, start chopping. Don't throw long range of punches. Okay. Throw short, choppy punches inside. And when you get there, work this summons. Make him earn what he's doing, Terry. He may have to. And throwing punches at him. The guy wasn't doing nothing. Don't worry about the one around. You're winning the fight. But you win, you just got to keep going. 
Here's Johnson throwing a lead right, followed by a big left. That was a right jab, left hook combination, basically. McGroom, who had been averaging only eight or nine power shots per round before the sixth, opened up and threw 21 power punches in round six and landed 10 of them. So that was by far his most successful round at trying to do something inside against Kirk Johnson. Still, Johnson, the more active fighter, landing the harder shots, taking advantage of his size, and he clocks McGroom with a left hook there. Another thing McGroom hasn't elected to do here, which may help him in this fight against a bigger man, is to go to the body. And that's something that Johnson had planned to do early on, but since the first two or three rounds, he has not remembered to go to the body as much against McGroom. Might be a worthwhile strategy for him to go back to that, too. Yeah, because it would open McGroom's head up a lot easier. Jabbing down to try to get McGroom to drop his hands. Johnson looking down as though McGroom was on his foot, but now Terry McGroom steps in and takes advantage with a left and a right hand. But he still has to be careful here. He's getting awfully brave in there, Roy. Both fighters unbeaten, and both of them showing that unbeaten mentality. Especially Terry McGroom. His desire has really surfaced in these past couple rounds. I think now is the time for him to really push the issue if he ever wanted to make up for any lost ground in this fight. Two more great counter shots in there by McGroom. A left and a right. And Johnson has lost his equilibrium here in round seven as Terry McGroom has begun to slice him up on the inside. One thing, he's basically lost control of the fight with the jab. He has not been controlling McGroom with the jab like he was earlier in the fight. I think Johnson's going to get an earful from George Benton. Okay. Now listen. The way this guy is coming to you. The way this guy. Thanks, man. The way this guy is coming to you. This should be right up your alley, Kurt. Listen. You know, see, you can meet this guy head on because you cannot fight him on the inside. You got a good defense and use your defense, catch punches, block punches, then fire back. But you got to start at the bottom. Don't let this guy push you back. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. You got to meet this little guy's charge and catch the punches. Use that defense that you know you got. Catch punches, then fire back, but start at the bottom. Don't let this guy bully you. Make you look like shit. Here is McGrew the attack, the little guy going after the big guy. Two flurries in the round may have won the round for McGrew. Well, we may find out more about Johnson than we thought we would in terms of uh, what he's got inside as well as outside now. Georgie Benton made a very good point to Johnson just now in the corner. He told him to meet this smaller guy head on. Don't let him push you back. I've been wondering why he's been going back while the little guy's coming after him. He's been going back for the last two rounds. All that does is give the little guy confidence. It's a mark of McGroom's will that it happened. It was just a case of Terry McGroom hanging in and ultimately mentally forcing Johnson to go back.
Good job by Terry. Why is Johnson backing up like this? Is he just not comfortable fighting in close, Roy? I think he's beginning to get a little tired and he doesn't want to stay inside with Ragoon. No, he's not comfortable. He shouldn't be comfortable fighting in close with a smaller guy. But he also shouldn't be backing up from him this much. He should have kept control of him with the jab. No longer commanding the fight with the jab, so therefore, the territorial imperative belongs to McGroom. Good left hand inside right Johnson. Left uppercut. Landed flush. That momentarily slows McGroom's forward momentum. But now here comes Terry again. Ace Miller told Terry in the corner two rounds ago that the guy comes out, throws a 45 second barrage after the action, and then he's yours. And this seems to be coming true. Which would go to your point about Johnson hiring. Now Johnson stands his ground and uses his superior power. And McGroom says, I'm willing to take it. a punch that landed in the eye and that's why he went down i think you might think that he was thumb. tony perez stops the fight stops the fight in favor of kirk johnson And that is why I think the smaller guy should, was safer outside because I knew if he ran into a big punch inside, that would end matters. Johnson may have more, look better against a big slow guy who most heavyweights are than a fellow like this, Roy. Yeah, he was quick. He would have. You take a big six foot three inch, 230 pound guy, doesn't move fast. This kid has quick hands and, and, and good movement and could look more dominant against that sort of fighter. Yes, he could. That kind of fight was a great learning experience for Johnson. It does appear that McGroom's left eye is swelling some, and obviously he feels as though he caught something more than just a punch there, maybe a thumb, but the punch itself was formidable. And it was a countout. We heard Harold Letterman uh, off mic over there instructing us that Tony Perez finished the 10 count and therefore the knockout. Well, let's take a look. Good right uppercut. I don't think the left hook caught him in the eye. The uppercut did. Watch the right uppercut. Right uppercut right here. Boom. There's yep. the shot. That's what happened when a small guy's inside with a little, with a big guy, and that big guy connects with a good punch. He cannot stand under that pressure. Watch this right uppercut again. Right up under the middle. Boom. Wide open. Right down the middle. Nothing else he can do about it. So, Harold, are you telling me that McGroom's knee was still down on the canvas at the time that Perez reached 10? I believe so, Jim. You know, the belt doesn't save you, so the referee keeps counting, and Tony kept counting. And he went 9, 10, and McGroom hadn't risen off the canvas yet. Tony waved his arms, meaning a KO. Gotcha. I was under the impression that McGroom had lifted that knee up, and therefore it would have been up to Perez to wave him off on his own discretion, but... Harold corrects me. Count had expired. Classic knockout. Let's go to Mark Biro for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, three minutes even of the eighth round. The winner by knockout and still undefeated, Kirk Johnson. Johnson. All right, let's go up into the ring. Uh, I assume we're ready to take this Larry Merchant interview with Kirk Johnson. Yep. All right, Kirk, congratulations. 
Give us your assessment of the fight. You started off strong, but you seem to be looking for a way to get to him in the middle rounds. Well, you know, first of all, I give thanks to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. This fight is dedicated to my Aunt Deborah Ann Johnson. Uh, you know, when I came out there strong in the first round, even though I looked pretty strong to myself, I really didn't feel like I was really there. So what I had to do is, you know, try to get the jab going so I can catch him with something flush. Did his quickness as a heavyweight give you some problems? Uh, not that it really gave me so much problem, you know. He was shorter and smaller than I really thought he was, so therefore he didn't have a whole big target for me to hit at. And plus he kept his hands up pretty good, too. All right, we're going to try to run a picture of the knockout punch. What do you recall about it and describe what you see on the screen? Well, you know, at the time, you know, my coach, George Benton, he said, you know, go up the middle because... You know, when I was hitting him with stuff, straight punches, he was kind of like seeing him and guiding him up. So I just said, I'll just go to the middle. And I had to fight strong because George, he knew at the time that I was fighting very lazy. So he just wanted me to work. Thank you very much, Kirk. Thank you. All right, Jim, the trainer of McGroom told me that the tip of Johnson's glove did, did catch McGroom in the eye. Go ahead. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Final punch stat numbers. You can see that Johnson landed 73 more punches through almost exactly twice as many punches. McGroom was landing at a higher percentage as he carefully picked his shots inside. And on the three judges' scorecards, Kirk Johnson was leading comfortably on all three at the time of the knockout. Jabs, another category dominated by Johnson, although again, McGroom was landing at a higher rate, more selective with his punches. Johnson, particularly in the early rounds, was controlling the fight with his longer, stronger jab. And uh, Roy Jones, you've seen David Tua, Andrew Galata, some of the other aspiring young heavyweights. Where does Kirk Johnson rank among all those guys? I think he ranks right among the top of the young and up-and-coming heavyweights. He would be a very good fight, a very good test for any of those guys that you just named. And I think vice versa. All right. So we had a learning experience there. Right now, we're going to turn our attention to the second of our two bouts this evening and get ready to see one of the most exciting fighters in the entire sport.